everyone. I'm Kelly Mady and I work with Weatherby Healthcare. And today we are joined again by Dr. Kuznetsov. He is a board certified orthopedic surgeon. He has a decorated career in the US military. And he also actively engages in graduate medical education and clinical research. Dr. Kuznetsov, thank you so much for joining us again. And once again, thank you for your service. Thank you for the introduction, Kelly. Happy to be here. Well, you know, we love your blogs. You are also actively writing articles for us on our Weatherby Healthcare blog. And today we wanted to talk about another one of your great posts um, about four things you need to know about getting licensed in a new state. So how many states have you worked in? Thanks, Kelly. So despite my uh, exhaustive and often impressive list of state licenses, which stands somewhere between 15 and 20 currently, uh, I've actually worked in four different states through locums. Now, what are the benefits that you find to working in different places? So I think the benefits in of working in different places are manifold. Um, and, you know, this is by no means an exhaustive list, but I think the first things that come to mind, first and foremost, are that it keeps you versatile and adaptable. So working in different places, you know, states, hospitals, you'll be exposed to a variety of different medical environments, healthcare systems, and patient populations. Um, and in doing so, you, you'll really learn to pick up new systems quickly and gain a greater breadth of experience. You're additionally exposed to a wide range of ideas and practices that you may be in a unique position to change or adopt into your own repertoire. So for instance, you know, you might observe you know, both practices that are obsolete and those which are cutting edge. And really in order to maintain your own state of the art treatment, it's really important to promote mixing of ideas and traveling to different places really facilitates this interconnectedness. Um, finally, I think on a more individualistic level, by traveling to a variety of locations, you really will see and experience these new places. And this really gives you the opportunity to explore potential geographic locations or practice uh, sorry, to geographic locations to practice or even uh, to vacation. So I'd also encourage that you take your family so that they have the opportunity to really fill out these new locations as well. I'm, I'm throwing a question in here, but have you found a new state that you love while doing locums? Uh, I'm currently in the Midwest right now, and I think that uh, I'm California bound at some point. Okay, going to some more sunshine. Sure. Now, how long does it usually take to get licensed? So uh, licensing time varies widely from state to state and uh, maybe even longer now, especially in the setting of staff shortages due to COVID. Um, the licensing process can really be broken down kind of into, I think, four main components. You have the time that you spend filling out and submitting your initial application, the time you spend gathering supporting documentation from outside sources, you know, your medical degrees and diplomas and other verifications from other states. The third component would be the initial processing time from the state once all the components are finally submitted, which again, they don't start processing it until everything is submitted. And then lastly, I think sometimes the most painful part is really the back and forth time between you and the Department of Medical Licensing. So all of these four components are really highly variable in duration and oh, the overall licensing process can really be quite daunting. Um, with the amount of formal documentation that's required. That being said, I think this is something, in my opinion, that locums companies tackle exceptionally well um, with their seasoned licensing staff. This really eliminates the lag time for filling out the application and requesting documentation, which ultimately is all taken care of for you, and really boils down the whole process, all the components down to the state-dependent processing times, which are unfortunately uncontrolled. Now, I've received licenses as quick as within one month and other licenses took up to four to six months to obtain. Uh, and for this reason, I really recommend beginning the process as early as possible. So when an opportunity pops up and in a location that would, you'd be interested in working, I'd strongly recommend seizing the opportunity to immediately get the process started. And you discuss about how the licensing teams within these locums agencies are there to help you. How involved are you then in getting the license compared to the locums agency and what they do for you? So in brief, I would say minimally, which is exactly the way that I like it and I think that most people would have it. Uh, as I mentioned, locums agencies make this otherwise formidable and discouraging process quick and easy for you as a physician. So once you commit to an assignment, they begin the licensing process almost immediately. And essentially the only component that I was responsible for was reviewing the pre-populated application providing a few signatures, often, you know, 
wet ink and sending fingerprints from my local office just for background check, which is all very standard from state to state. Now, as, as, again, as I said, as a busy practicing physician, I'll tell you that this free service is really invaluable. Um, and if not only for the peace of mind, for the amount of time and money that it would personally save you from having to jump through all these hoops by yourself. It's always good to have a team around you, <laughs> someone Absolutely. there to help you. Now, once you get the license, are there rules about how you have to use it, when you have to use it by? So in my experience, once you're licensed, uh, the license is obviously good until the expiration or renewal date. So you don't need to worry about time constraints on finding a job and using it. Um, now, most licenses expire on a two to three year cycle. And so, um, you know, it's something that you do have to keep an eye on in terms of renewal. Sometimes license renewals do require continuing medical education um, and other training prior to renewal. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. But in fact, having a state license in hand really sets the table for you working in that state at any point in the future, just because renewals are substantially easier than the initial procurement. And are there pros that you see to having multiple licenses? Yeah, I mean, on that note, I think the pros of having multiple licenses, as I said, are that you are very versatile when it comes to new assignments. So there are often a number of physicians interested in the same exact assignment that you are. So when a new assignment pops up, having the license really gives you a competitive edge. When you already have the state license, there's really no lag time. You can get presented immediately to the facility, and this gives you really the best possible shot at getting the job that you want. You know, this is compared to your, your counterpart who may need to begin the three or six month application process by which time when it's finished, the job will have long been filled. And are there any cons? Yeah, so, uh, you know, a mentor of mine in training once told me that you can't get something for nothing. And so while having a number of state licenses under your belt will really keep you locked and loaded to take on whatever assignments may arise, the more licenses you have, the more, as I said earlier, verifications that you'll need with each subsequent license and often with most credentialing processes. So when you apply for a new license, the medical licensing department needs verifications from all your other existing, license, existing licenses, I'm sorry, from the licensing departments, uh, whether they be active or expired often. Um, so while the locums agency will take care of this, it may add some time onto acquiring new licenses. And some states may obviously be slower to turn over these verifications than others. So I think there's potentially a sweet spot of having a good number of state licenses and in states where you would want to practice, but not having too many so as to make the process impossibly slow or overly cumbersome. And you know, this, the, the sweet spot obviously varies provider to provider. And I think based on specialty and availability of jobs within that specialty. Well, this was great information to know. To summarize those four things that you said that we need to know about obtaining a license in a new state, start early, is what I hear, keep an open line of communication. You don't have to use it and to plan ahead. So thank you, Dr. Kuznov, so much for once again joining us and sharing your expertise and insight. We love having you um, on our Weatherview blog. Absolutely, Kelly. Thank you again for having me.